City of Stevens Point Public Works Meeting, recorded Monday, May 20, 2019. I have 6.30. We will call the special Board of Public Works meeting to order. I know that Alder Morrow is excused. Trish, would you please call the roll? Sure, Mayor Wiesa. Here. Here. Mary Nebone. Here. Corey Laddick. Here. Jeremy Slowinski. Here. Sean Morrow's excused and Tori Jennings. Here. Nikira Zarazuga. Here. All right, we do have a quorum, so we will continue. Uh, we only have one item on the agenda tonight, is that, and that is uh, regards to the temporary repairs and reconstruction of Country Club Drive. Um, I, I think at least some of that was outlined uh, for you in the memo from the Director of Public Works. Director, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, relative to that, we have had a little more time to to spend uh, putting some of our own things together. So I, I do have uh, a couple of estimates that we okay. prepared in engineering, as well as to go with those, to give everyone an idea of what we're talking about, some typical sections to share. Okay, so why don't you hand those out to the committee members at the very least, um, and then you can go through the numbers that we found. Yes. Well, basically, for those listening uh, and watching at home, um, Country Club Drive is in the town of Hall. There's a section between Highway 10 and the new city overpass, grade separation, um, that is in rough shape. Uh, it is in the town of Hall, and um, we found an agreement that has a year of 1985. There's signatures on it from a former mayor uh, and the town chairman, and uh, there's no date on it. But it talks about the city, when a reconstruction is needed, the city can pay for 70% of it, and the town of Hall will pay for 30% of that reconstruction. Obviously, this is outside of our normal budgeting and capital project. Um, I know we had asked for some information in regards to the maintenance schedule that had been done, but we, um, we just decided internally here at the very least to bring it to the committee and look at um, some of the options. So right now, I know we're only talking about the road reconstruction. There are some opportunities here, however, for the town of Hull uh, or other interested parties to make some additional improvements, one of which I think would be a great opportunity, and that is a multi-use path. But again, this is within the town of Hull, not the city of Stevens Point. So what we're talking about tonight is the possibility of reconstructing Country Club Drive in an expeditious fashion. Uh, and the director has compiled some numbers, and I'll turn it over to you, director, to let us know what you found. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess the uh, the idea here that we always have put together, if I'm getting picked up here, is uh, with the, the director. Why don't I have you come up to yeah. the lectern? I can do that. I can you share with you. Thank you. I think the microphone's on. I just I'm not All 100 right. sure on that. Sure, it's on. So um, with the typical sections, the actually starting at the bottom. Um, to look at that first. Excluding what you see to near the right of way line, the multi-use path would be a replacement in kind uh, for what is what exists there currently. Um, the uh, the upper one would be a, a slight change to what, what exists there. The reason we others looked at that is there seemed to be some discussion uh, we'd heard from people identifying this multi-use path, uh, that existing path is, is at least 10 feet wide. I think it's actually 12 <coughs> feet across the bridge. Uh, uh, the Hoover overpass. So kind of the idea just to see what it is, because I think as I stated in the memo, really the biggest concern that we otherwise have in engineering is just making sure that whatever we do now should be a long-term solution and whatever we you know happens now, we're gonna have to live with. So we don't want to go too quickly, although the pavement is definitely in, in need of some attention. Uh, we just wanna make sure that we've given some thought to things and everyone knows what the ramifications of whatever choices are, are being made. So. If we wanted to keep a, a, a multi-use path more typical to what we've seen around town and what exists, we'd probably be looking for you know, that 10 foot range. Now that gets pretty tight to fit with the existing pavement widths that are out there right now. So that lends itself to actually narrowing the, the cross section of the road a little bit. 
Uh, now, the one thing, of course, to do this is we've been working diligently to get this um, out. So we really just finished up today, so we haven't had any chance to talk. We haven't talked to the town about this or anything else. Uh, this is really hot off the, the presses. You just actually was downstairs getting these off the, the printer uh, when I came out by I was uh, a little bit late. So that's what we're otherwise talking about. However, probably the uh, that gives you an idea of what the two um, estimates are. Yours is actually uh, two-sided. I've got two estimates to uh, to correlate with those two. The the, mm. the section at the top of the page is the 24 foot. Uh, so if you look across the top, it'll say estimate for Country Club Drive, 24 feet of pavement. The bottom one would be then the one with 30 feet of pavement as the pavement width is wider. To give you an idea of what we're looking for as an estimate. Now these are using numbers that are very fresh from us, uh, from recent projects, uh, to see what we feel it is. And we definitely come up with something more significant than what the town had presented to, to Corey uh, when he was uh, at their, their task force meeting the other week. So as we somewhat suspected, and I had stated in the memo, is thinking that with some changes, this would be utilizing the type of pavement design that we feel would be more appropriate, given the volume of traffic, not that we've had time to do accurate traffic counts, but the volume of traffic, the number of trucks that otherwise operate within that corridor, uh, and as well as adding some swales to uh, accommodate and correct some of the, the drainage issues that, that exist. So you know, we're, we're definitely looking at, at more than the $155,000, in our opinion, to do this right. Um, from, you know, from our perspective, uh, this is what we'd be looking at. And I said the only difference really between these two estimates is kind of what we're looking for as far as the path and how that may lend itself into whatever sort of roadway work may be done today. Uh, my assumption is, and that's as the mayor had identified for the town really to decide, you know, if the path would go in, that's not part of the roadway construction, but how does that fit in and what are the ramifications of what we do today, making decisions, you know, into what the future may be. So, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. What we have, the rest of it was, I think, in the, uh, the, the memo. Um, but the only other thing I can really add to it is uh, we did have an opportunity to talk with American Asphalt. And kind of others have been going more towards temporary uh, solutions. Uh, would be you know how really to to work within that time frame. So to work expeditiously, they have a, a solution that would probably fall underneath the the bidding threshold that would probably get us through the summer. Um, but it would be questionable whether or not that could survive a, a winter. Uh, but that would pretty much just be patching you know the holes mm -hmm. that otherwise exist there in, in large swaths. To do something that would be, um, and of course, just for everyone's where the, the bidding threshold is $25,000. So we're looking at something that would probably very much so push to that limit. Uh, in talking with them, they do have some thoughts as far as what could potentially you know, give us another year or, or so to do that. And we're talking probably in the, don't have the finalized numbers, but forty to $50,000 would probably give us something that would then work you know, to, to make repairs suitable that would be more likely to last through a, a winter, although another winter like this last one could be rough on just about any roadway. Um, but that would probably you know, get us to a point where you know, it wouldn't be this immediate need to, to do the, uh, the complete reconstruction, resurfacing of that, that roadway. Um, but that would be what we've talked to them, going, haven't gone through all the finer details of what that plan would be, but uh, it would probably consist, for the most part, of patching those areas that are in the roughest shape and then doing just a thin overlay over the whole thing just to make sure as the plow trucks and as the, we're not getting water into the, the overlaps there and the plow trucks aren't hitting the edges of those patches and stuff just to seal it to make sure it would last through a winter Director, if we wanted to stretch um, it. Yes. Uh, if, I'm sorry, are you finished? Uh, yeah, I believe that's... Uh, all right. So um, because this isn't budgeted, it's not in our capital routine, and I'm going to have the Comptroller Treasurer speak to the financials of it. Uh, coming out of the existing streets budget, budget, what would this ballpark amount mean uh, for the city streets? Uh, one second. I got to... <laughs> I didn't have time to calculate our percentage here of things, but it's gone up a little bit, and, and I'm uh, trying to. So if we're looking in here, I'll just go this route. In rough numbers, so just in rough numbers, we'd be looking at using these estimates. Uh, 
in lieu of the, the town provided estimates, um, and, and even thinking the 24 foot of pavement, like I said, we haven't discussed it with them, but you know, narrowing the pavement would keep us at a lower cost of road reconstruction. You know, we're looking at about $240,000 as our share to, uh, to accomplish that. Uh, in order to do that, we, we don't have quite that much remaining in our streets budget uh, to cover those costs. As I identified in the memo, we have approximately $155,000 that we've set aside kind of in the planning going back over to last year as we're trying to find ways uh, to save on projects and to use any <coughs> of the uh, you know, contingency dollars that haven't been spent and, and carry those over as well as just trying to be selective of some of the, the other maintenance and repairs we've done this year. Uh, we have come up with $155,000 to tackle one of two projects that had been identified in years past being either Cozy Street or, or, or uh, Neville and uh, with Neville probably being the more in need of one based on, on traffic and, and overall condition to do that. Uh, we also have kind of internally worked on some things, you know, knowing the condition of, of Country Club Drive as it was going into the winter. Um, we've kind of just not touched uh, approximately $40,000 within our budget, assuming that some of that would probably have to go to Country Club. And quite honestly, going into last fall, that was a, just kind of a, a guess on, on our part to make sure we had saved something so we weren't caught completely uh, unprepared. So we probably have just shy of $200,000 that we could spend on that, you know, um, part of which would be earmarked for this to do work on Country Club. The majority of it, however, would then be taken from that Neville Street project, which would have to be postponed for at least another year then. Okay, thank you. Um, and stay up there, because I think yes. we're gonna have some questions, but I wanna have Corey uh, give our treasurer an opportunity to speak on this as well. Sure. So, um, you know, the director and I had already spoken uh, about the initial estimate and the 150,000, and I think we felt pretty good that, that we could figure that out. Um, this higher number, I guess this is my first time seeing the higher number, so I'd say that we could look in a couple of different places. One of the things that we could look at is how the existing capital projects are coming in um, throughout the capital budget for 2019, and usually as the year goes on, we get a better picture of that as, as we're going forward. Um, the other thing, we're still working through our annual audit. We can also take a look at how fund balance is coming in to see if, if there would be any money available there. Uh, so I guess those would be the first two places that I would, would look. Uh, at this point, you know, I don't have a, um, a magic pot of money handy right now um sure. but <laughs> but but certainly i i think um you, you know if this is something that needs to happen there are a couple of places that we could look for it uh if worse comes to worse and if if neither of those work out um also we have not done our annual borrowing yet this year so that would be the other option would be to increase our our annual borrowing of course that's not something that you know we usually like to do as far as borrowing more than we planned um, but this was unexpected and we're in a situation where you know I guess we have to to do the best we can with the circumstances the annual bar the, the borrowing if we were to add some money to the borrowing does that require a budget amendment it it may because you're at that point you're changing the amount of the capital budget and you're changing that total amount of that capital budget so yes I, I would say that that would require uh, a budget amendment which also uh, just for full disclosure then would require two-thirds approval of the council so you would need uh, eight members to vote in the affirmative on that Thank you. And, and I apologize um, to the alders and staff. I know we're trying to expedite this. We had that initial estimate from the town hall that was just kind of a ballpark. Um, I asked the director to try and get some better numbers. We felt that was kind of low. Uh, and it, he's been working very diligently trying to get these. These came in today. I hadn't even seen them yet. So we don't didn't know exactly where we were going to stand. Um, so the numbers are before you as soon as we have them. We're trying to get this um, decided on quickly 
because in the normal process, we'd be talking about road repair, you know, in October for the following year. Um, we are in a time crunch now that if we're going to do something this year, we want to get that process rolling because we don't want to start making approvals in August and September and then run into winter and not get it done this year. Um, so that's why we're here. This is, of course, the, your decision, uh, the, the Board of Public Works and then Common Council. I will, uh, Director Lemke, did you have anything to add? One of the questions that I got uh, was, what sort of utilities are under Country Club? And I have no idea because my GIS doesn't cover the town of Hull. <clears throat> do you have any ability to do that? Or Pete, I think you're, do you, you want to, did you want to speak on this at all? I really don't know much about that. Eh? Okay. Uh, for those of you who um, don't know, Pete Kaminsky is uh, with the Town of Hull on the Highway Department or Streets Department in the Town of Hull. Chairman Holdridge was unable to make it tonight as were pretty much all of the other board members because this was kind of a, a quick um, meeting, but uh, they did send some information in regards to that that they would be interested in pursuing uh, that multi-use path. They talked to... Uh, well, either they have talked or they will be talking to members of the Green Circle Trail, uh, but John Holdridge says he would bring it up. There's a meeting on Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Uh, Chairman Holdridge says he would bring it up at that meeting. Any questions from the committee for... I'm sorry, Joel. Yeah, just to get to your question about utilities, we do have water main, uh, sewer, gravity main, and sewer force main all within that street. Uh, I haven't heard anything about the Green Circle's involvement. I'm the treasurer this year. Okay, and, and I know I'm probably putting you on the spot, but in your estimation, are those utilities in need of repair? If we were to do a reconstruct on, and this was a city street, would we be looking at utility replacement as well? No. no? no. Okay, good. That's That saves some money. <laughs> Alder Slowinski, you had a question. Um, so what's the existing typical right now? Is it is 30? The, the, uh, the existing typical would be similar to the 30 without the swales and, of course, the multi-use path. Okay. Because, well, and then the estimate, and I, I don't know, I read it somewhere that the, the green circle, that path would be, would be reimbursed for that? Well, what otherwise is understanding is when... Uh, so I thought... I Treasurer that. Laddick was at the, the task force meeting, so it was mentioned that the, and I guess you could maybe add mm -hmm. more specifically since you were there, so I don't screw it up. Sure, I, I guess I would say we've heard differing um, things on that. Uh, we did hear that there was some interest uh, from the Green Circle Committee, but then we've also heard from other members of that committee that it really hasn't been brought forward for a formal vote uh, by that board yet, so it, it's, you know, they can't really commit to that as sort of the last thing that I've heard. Um, and I would ask, I, I think we have the treasurer for the Green Circle Trail Committee present here. Director Lemke, could you speak to that? Yeah, um, I, I haven't heard of it yet through the committee, through the Green Circle Trail at all. I can tell you that we did consider one similar thing this year during budgeting time and finding the cost related to it, it, it fell off the radar very quickly. The other thing is, just as a general explanation, they do everything they can to get trails off of roads. So where we are on roads, it's because there's an, a need to. Right. They don't do a lot in the way of participating in the improvement of paving. Okay, thank you. And for those of you who didn't figure it out, Director Lemke is the treasurer for the Green Circle Trail Committee. Alder Slowinski? And then um, I'm assuming uh, this is assuming that that subgrade is in good condition. I mean, what? Yes, and that's one of the things that, we, you know, within our estimate and, and what we feel would be more appropriate if, um, even to pulverize and you know relay it you know what we would otherwise look into to doing is taking all that yeah you know pulverize it basically move everything to one side of the road and actually undercut that base to, to add more just to stabilize it because that's you know definitely a concern of ours as well is is it truly sufficient to uh so that is part of your plan so that was otherwise yes given consideration to that because that's part of from the beginning we're gonna do it because again it goes to the type of traffic the volume of traffic and the you know the type of traffic with the trucks that do travel on it uh, we definitely want to make sure that and that pavement design starts all the way from the base it's not just the asphalt so we wanted to look at the, the whole thing and I, one more question i know you don't have a crystal ball but you know if everything were kind of to come in line what i mean you know design this put it out for bid i mean what can we kind of expect for uh, construction uh if we were to send us i i don't know exactly how 
busy American at the moment. My understanding is that you know they were willing to do something otherwise I thought they could mobilize you know, yet this summer to do it. I think to give us some time to design it would just push it back towards the fall. I don't see why we still couldn't accomplish that if that's what our goal was, is to get it done this year. And so instead of um, you know maybe a, you know two months, we'd probably need at least another a month. Either way, it's going to have to be bid. It's just a matter of how much design effort goes into to doing it, a uh, just straight pulverize and relay is pretty straightforward. We would need a little more time to work out some of this with the swales and stuff uh, throughout the corridor and where that trail might otherwise lie if that was a future consideration. So we would need a few extra weeks to get that put together. So we'd probably push the to back, you know, a month, maybe two. And when you say we are, we're talking about our, the engineering. our engineering is going to. We could do that. We've already completed a survey on this. Uh, <laughs> So we, we have the information to do it, or whether we hand it off to someone else, if that's otherwise the desire, I don't think it would take long to get that. I think the um, you know, I think the engineering department could do it faster because we're ready to go, mm -hmm. even though we've got projects to do, but we could we can make it a priority and, and get it done. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, I just want to caution, we, we did talk internally about having our engineering department um, do the work. And yes, we could probably do it quicker and cheaper. However, because it's a town of Hall Road, um, it, it seems to make more sense to have uh, an outsider third party engineering firm do the work. Not that it would happen, but 20 years from now or 15 years from now, um, if something does go wrong, they might be able to say, someone might be able to say it was the city engineering that, that caused the problem, uh, putting us potentially at some exposure risk there. Uh, but that's still up for us to decide. And mm -hmm. uh, President Johnson. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Mr. B uh, Director Badoon. I, following up on Alder Slowinski's questions, I, I would caution against, you know, diving into wanting to get this done as quickly as possible because we'd hate to have one bidder show up. I mean, all the crews are, I mean, they're all full with work and having the, the latitude to kind of work into the fall if we can. I think um, I would love to see at least three or four or five companies bid on this, but if we try to push this out now, I think we're going to end up with, we'll be lucky with one. And that definitely becomes a, a risk at this time of the year yeah. um, versus, yes, if we did have it, you know, through the fall and could bid it out first thing, you know, in 2020, I would agree we would probably have a better bidding environment at that time. Okay, Alder Nabel. Um, thank you, Mayor and Director Bradoon. Um, my question would be the cost of the swales. Um, would that fall under the city to take care of that portion of it? Because again, every amount of this keeps adding up right. to- Right, uh, I guess that would otherwise need to be cited. In, in my opinion, the, the multi-use path um, is exactly that, a multi-use path. Um, even though it's within the right of way, you know, if there were sidewalks, the town wanted to add sidewalks to the other side, I think that too would be, you know, even though it's in the right of way, that would not be the agreement, as I read it, is the roadway. Um, so I would think that's pretty much everything that I think because of the swale is really, in my opinion, otherwise following that, it, it add about, oh, what is it, $10 a lineal foot for each side of it. It's not, a, you know, once I put the mail, like $35,000, $45,000 to the overall project. So it's, you know, maybe 10%. While it does add something, I think that's, I know, a necessary part of it because that's part of a, a, a long-term design for the roadway itself, where it, I think in order to ensure that the pavement lasts as long as it possibly can, it doesn't rely on having the multi-use path there or anything like that, but it does have to do have proper drainage. I think that would be uh, a necessity as far as I'm concerned in related to the road reconstruction. Um, and the second question I have also is that, um, again, um, is this gonna be a long-term agreement that we have forever and a day now with, with Oh. Because if that would be a, a good Logan question. I, I would think there should be a time frame that it is not well, there, uh, there is, 30 at least. Isn't there, you know, according to the agreement as I read it, and I don't know if otherwise Logan would have a comment, is that when it's yeah. annexed, the agreement terminates. So, so when what happens? I'm sorry. When, the, the, when, it's an, when the annexation occurs and it's no longer within the town, otherwise there is no ending to the, uh, the agreement that I read right into there anywhere. One be made though to? That would have to of course be, I mean, that's a good Logan question. I think both parties would have to agree to it. Because it, it just seems um, 
And the, oh, one other question was then, again, it just seems to be like a forever, let's just keep paying everything. But the other question would be then um, the weight of trucks on there. Um, when I looked through there, it said that both parties would have to agree if there was a weight limit on the road. Um, why aren't we doing that? Because that street, that road was never made for truck traffic. And there was, at one time, I thought, the, the thought was that trucks would take the highway to HH, which was constructed for that kind of a... And I don't know the overall history of the, the road and street structures. What I do know is that sometime, and I don't know the exact year, and I don't know if we have a record of it. This is just going with what people who have been around longer than I have have told me is that in the early 2000s sometime that that road was milled and overlaid. I do know that when they were doing some of the preliminary work for the overpass, some of the pavement thicknesses there were surprisingly you know, th thick. So it seems to me that that road is suitable. I think even looking at it right now, I'm not sure that we're actually seeing the basin. I think a lot of what it's doing is just that upper layer of the pavement. So I think what we're seeing beneath it, which you're meaning is where the road was originally milled off to get there. So I think there's actually uh, a good substrate there to, you know, and I think that's part of the reason why, even in my memo, I identified, you know, some sort of longer term, you know, solution. So I'm not sure that the road is completely shot um, as it is that couldn't be fixed to carry us into through proper planning and design if we so chose to, to take that road. However, there's, of course, a cost to make those repairs. Then there's yet a cost of reconstruction. So, you know, again, you're talking about adding costs. You're taking some costs in it, and it's where do we draw the line and how do we want, it, you know, this project otherwise to, to go. But I think what you're actually seeing there is that there is actually pavement beneath it because I don't think anyone, I've tried through there quite a bit, there's not gravel coming up because we haven't gotten into the base. We're just getting into another layer of older asphalt that still lies beneath that, that surface. Okay, Alder Jennings and then Alder Kneebone. Um, Director, so you don't think the rapid deterioration of the road is a result of the increased truck traffic as a result of the Hoover overpass? I think it contributes. I mean, all the extra traffic and stuff that's going to, I, I, we don't have actual counts, but I would say that there's more traffic going through there now than there was before. I think it actually does contribute to it, but whether that is the, it's not the sole contribution, because I think the condition of the road is already, you know, there, I think you look back, even before that Hoover Overpass project came up and there were already patches in the road and cracks and there were things, and, and those are the areas that they are. In fact, if you, you know, look out there, you'll see that the, it's only really on the south side, it's the only really bad spot is the area on the southern 400, 500 feet of the road at 1,700 feet total. The side that's really deteriorated the most is the side on the, you know, on, is the northbound lane on the east side. And a lot of that has to do with, because you can see nearly everyone, every bad spot within there is an area that if you pass through there in the spring, you would have splashed through the water to get there. That's definitely a, a contributing factor to it. Otherwise, with the cracks that were otherwise in there, I don't know what the history of, of cracks in other words been or any other work had occurred, but you know you have several things going. The, the three things that deteriorate a road, you know, are of course the the traffic, the weight, you know, so the heavy loads, sunlight, and water, um, and you definitely have at least two of those happening there. Um, and even in the, the winter time, as things were freezing and thawing, I mean, there was a lot of standing water out there. And a lot of times you can see the canopy of the trees shading off the road as well, and not even allowing it to dry off. There's no place for the water to run off the road, and there isn't any sunlight getting down there to even dry it off. You know, and that means. And is it understood how the Hoover Overpass diverted water into that area? Is that understood? How the Changed the movement of water in that area, is that understood? We haven't otherwise studied it. I'm not sure how much any of that has otherwise changed. Much of the, the overall pass is otherwise was designed to contain water within that, that basin at the bottom of the hill. Right. But you know, much of it is you know going as you go north on there. There, you know, the Hoover Overpass has no impact on where that water goes. I said much of it is that just the water stands there, and that's the reason why the pavement was in that condition. Like I said, even before the Hoover Overpass had begun, you could see the the pavement condition in the areas that are under you know distress now starting to occur. I, I, I do have a statement to make about this. Do I do that now? Okay, uh, sure. But I want to have Director Lemke, who is the Director of Public Utilities, which includes stormwater, um, make a comment in regards to how, if at all, the installation of that overpass affected the water on the roads in Country Club Drive in the town hall. Everything within the project limits for the overpass project drains internally. So um, 
comes off the road into structures into pipe into two big ponds that were built for it so nothing's going on the road and running into that um, in fact all the projects that are done in that fashion it's kind of one of the requirements from their project limits in you you collect the water Thank you. Um, we've got one minute before we are required to call the council to order. What we will do is uh, in one minute we'll call the council to order and then we will stand in recess until such time as we get the special board of public works meeting done. Um, is, Alder, is your comment less than a minute? Uh, probably not. Okay. Ne Alder Kneebone? I think if we move quickly we do so at our peril. I think we need to design this road for the future, not for the now. We, if the problem is water, just filling some holes isn't going to help. We have to, we have to build this road so it lasts. We're going to look pretty dumb if we have to come back in two years and say, well, you know, if we'd have spent an extra hundred thousand two years ago, we wouldn't have to spend three hundred thousand now. So I think we should let the engineers, whoever they may be, have an opportunity to look at what's going to make this road right for all users and go from there. Thank you. And with that, I am going to recess the Board of Public Works meeting uh, for this Common Council meeting. Now I will reconvene the Special Board of Public Works. Um, we were in the middle of the discussion regarding the possible reconstruction of Country Club Drive. Alder Jennings, you had comments. Um, yes, the, in terms of city decision making, there's probably nothing that makes me angrier than the Hoover overpass. Um, it's an example of incredibly poor planning, poor, poor engineering, and poor decision making on the part of the council at that time and the mayor and leadership in general. Um, diverting money to the overpass is why we have a deteriorating division street, the economic engine of our community, and we have no way of funding the redesign and reconstruction of that important corridor. Uh, the biggest benefactor of the overpass is Clover, who didn't spend a dime on it and who isn't spending a dime on it now. So people paying taxes in Plover can get to work on time in Stevens Point. Um, as the director indicated, truck, increased truck traffic as a result of the Hoover Pass now as a diverted area um, has in some way contributed to the rapid deterioration of the roadway. So Stevens Point City taxpayers are facing cost um, for this massively overbuilt Hoover Overpass and we are responsible for maintaining it, uh, repairing it, and eventually replacing it. And now we're facing the costs of this roadway as a result of the Hoover <coughs> overpass. Um, there's just so many things that were terrible about that, and I'm just really angry that this is happening again. And I will not even consider voting for this if there's not a multi-use path that is in, in the Portage County Bicycle and Pedestrian Plan. Um, AE, AE comms plans were altered to accommodate that um, multi-use path on the uh, west side. So those things, I won't even consider that if that path is not here. I agree with alders that have spoken already that let's not waste money on band-aids and let's do this properly and i get very nervous when there's these you know quick we got to do this and one last comment i really didn't appreciate it mayor that you got on facebook um, making claims that this that appeared to be this is a done deal before council even saw this and i object to that so those are my comments thank you any other comments from the committee Alder Slowinski. I, I guess I just want to reiterate that I, I, I too, I'm not for Band-Aids, but I'm just concerned that if we try to rush this now, we possibly can miss something and, you know, potentially uh, be costly in the future. I think it's definitely worth the, the money invested to do a temporary fix and uh, do this right and, uh, you know, uh, plan on for next year, uh, next spring, and then that way we have more competitive bidding. I think we will recover our uh, temporary fix just by doing it that way. Okay. Commissioners, uh, sorry, committee members, what are your wishes? 
I guess Alder Slowinski. I'll move forward to or move to uh, approve a temporary repair or instruct the department of Scott and his department to um, come up with a temporary repair plan and then um, continue to move forward with a uh, more uh, final uh, reconstruct plan for possibly next year or however it may be. Okay. Do we have a second? Second by Alder person Kneebone. Further discussion? Well, I, I guess Lord Treasurer. I, I have a question for the, the director is just so, you know, in your estimation, I know you said you were thinking about forty to 50000 to get it to last through the winter. Um, do you think that we will indeed recover that with a, a lower bid price in the, the following year? Uh, well, I don't have my crystal ball, but I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a fifty, forty, to fifty thousand dollar price tag. We'd, you know, I guess we'd be looking at about a ten percent, you know, slightly larger than ten percent savings. Then I think bidding at the right time could probably get there. I'm not sure we would recoup all of it, but I do think we have potential to recoup most of it. That's probably about as close as I can I can say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Comptroller? Nope. That was my only question. Okay. Alder Jennings. Um, I'm not sure. Are we voting on this typical? Is this the typical that will be used? I would defer to the alder who made the motion on this. No, I mean, I, this is just preliminary. And again, that's the reason why I don't, I don't, you know, this was put together in what, a day, two days? Yeah. So Alder Slowinski, if I understand your motion, uh, the only action Temporary. you're taking tonight is directing uh, Director Badoon to move forward with getting estimates for temporary repairs. Yes. And then authorizing the director to uh, put into the capital budget for next year? Yes. Is that correct? That's my intention, yes. Okay, so no dollar amounts are being approved tonight. The motion is that the director will move forward and get an estimate for the temporary repair that will get us through the end of the year. Um, and get come back to this committee for costs on that and that the reconstruction um, costs be further researched and that comes back into the 2020 capital plan. Yes. Is that correct, Alder? Yes. Okay. Any questions on the motion? Okay, if you are Alder Kneebone. I would, uh, Director Badoon, would that give... It is, are we going to be throwing good money after bad if we do this now and, and give ourselves a chance to engineer something? Is this money, do you consider this, in your professional opinion, is this money well spent looking at the long-term future of that road? I, I do. Uh, I think, yeah, this is actually a good plan to go through it because I think what we'll otherwise do it, the planning of anything has already been set up uh, well documented. You know, the more you otherwise plan something, the more you save at the end result when you do construction. And, um, so it's not always quantifiable, but if we take our time and plan it right, uh, we will probably find, maybe not monetarily, but I think we'll find more savings by adding either more value into what we're doing um, ultimately for the community or just in actual savings more than what we'll pay for any temporary repairs to get us to that point. Okay. Any other comments? I'm just going to make one comment uh, as a member. I'm going to be voting against this uh, simply because the need is there two months ago. And if we continue to drag our feet on this, the, the people who use that road, the people that live on that road are going to continue to experience things. We're pushing construction out, even for repairs, at least another month before we approve it, at least another month before they get started. Um, and something needs to be done sooner rather than later. Okay, uh, President Johnson. Well, I'm not a member of the committee. Um, I'm, I'm going to res respond to you. Uh, what you just said, um, and, and thank you for letting me speak. Um, I agree that it needs repairs, but I wholeheartedly agree with Alder Slowinski. I would argue that there are Stevens Point streets that are woefully, in, they're in dire straits. And I had more calls from more of my constituents on this than any other thing mm -hmm. in my three terms. <laughs> My constituents are angry, particularly those who are on Center Street east of Michigan, because a former mayor, um, the former mayor before you, had promised a certain rebuild which never occurred. Gilkey Street is bad. 
there are streets that are bad all over the place. If we use that, that sort of mentality that this is bad and there's people driving on it every day, um, that can't work. I agree with the director, and based on my experience bidding projects, multi-million dollar projects, you don't do them hastily because you'll have one bidder at the table and they've got you by the you-know-what. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank and you. while this isn't a multi-million dollar project, uh, it does make sense to plan it out a little bit so the, the, the engineering work that has been done can lay this out. I, I think at least some of the concern is this multi-use path um, that is not part of the road in my opinion. This is a separate piece of it, but it could be constructed later. Thank you. So if you are in favor of the motion to ask the director to get bids or quotes for the temporary repairs to get us through the year, um, and then have the street reconstruct in our capital project, you will vote yes. If you are opposed, you will vote no. And Trish, I will ask you to call the roll, please. Mayor Riza. No. Mary Nibon. Is that me? Uh, yes. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Jeremy Slowinski. Aye. John Morrill, excused. Tori Jennings. Aye. And uh, Makira. Aye. <laughs> it's probably going to take a little bit to get used to the names. I, yeah. I know I had a problem. So the motion passes, and we are adjourned at 7 11. Meeting is available for viewing on the city's website stevenspoint.com slash videos.